Hello, my name is Suzanne Hyde. I'm the director of the St. Marlaban Healing and Counselling Centre, which is based in the crypt of St. Marlaban Parish Church. Like all of you listening, we're also in lockdown, and I'm recording this from my uh, private practice in Hertfordshire. I wanted just to share some thoughts really about mental health during this period of time. And I might maybe do this on a weekly basis, just to reach out really and to share some musings that I've been having over the last few weeks. Seeing my patients in my private practice, the word that has come up time and time again, and I'm sure maybe you all can relate to this, is the word discombobulation. That everybody is feeling very discombobulated. And I've been thinking about this word and I've been trying to think about um, what that really means. I see it day after day in myself and in others and my patients. And I am not a scientist, but I do like to um, dabble a bit in neuroscience. I find it really helpful to see how understanding the brain can help us understand our mind and our emotions. And neuroscience can be really helpful for us at this time because it tells us about the brain and our brain and what happens to us in times of stress. And you probably will all know this, it's very in popular psychology, but um, I think it can be helpful to be reminded that we all have what's called a primitive brain, which is based at the, the bottom of our, of our neck. And this primitive brain is, can be called the monkey brain, the chimp brain. It's, it's our survival strategy. It's our primitive thing that we are going to survive. And when we were many thousands of years ago, it would help us if there was an animal that was going to kill us or, or if there were things that were happening, it would help us to, you'll know it, fight, flight or freeze in order to help us to survive. Now, whiz forward to the 21st century, we don't have wild animals, mostly, <laughs> coming in our gardens or in our lives, but what we do have is a different kind of threat. This time it's the coronavirus that threatens to take away our loved loved ones and make us ill. But what happens is in the brain, the brain is always looking out for danger, and when something different happens, when our routines are interrupted, when we are being bombarded by messages from the press and news flashes and people telling stories, our primitive brain goes into overdrive. It panics like mad. We see red, we get manic, we go and stockpile toilet rolls, um, we we may hide under the duvet, we may get very anxious. If we're anxious anyway, we may start having panic attacks. We may be worried about our loved ones. This is a very normal experience and response to something like this happening. The difference is we're all in this together, so we're all experiencing it very much at the same time, but perhaps in different ways. There may be people in your household that are reacting to it very angrily. Some might be very quiet, some may be very manic, and some may just be in denial. So that is normal. That is the good news that what we're all experiencing, that feeling of discombobulation is normal. The good news is we also have this thing here called the prefrontal cortex, which is has come online much, much later than the primitive brain. And this is the, the brain that helps us to process, to think, to make choices, to be creative. So what we need to do is find a way to bring this brain back online when we're very stressed. And the best thing to do that the foremost thing to do is we need to calm down our inner monkey that's charging around. We need to respond to that monkey and reassure it. We can give it a, I sort of sometimes found myself in the last few weeks kind of giving myself a bit of a hug, just saying it's okay, we can do this. Calm, calming everything down. And then the second thing is our breath. 
we often take it for granted that we breathe. I, I can't remember the statistic, but a lot. <laughs> and without it, it would be very worrying. But basically, when we breathe, when we're panicking, we breathe in a shallow way. We don't take enough oxygen. So if we breathe in and out in a regular, very deep way, it means it gives the message to what's called, my only scientific word really, the parasympathetic nervous system, which helps our rest and relaxation. It tells our parasympathetic nervous system that it's okay, we can calm down. So if we breathe regularly, take nice deep, deep breaths, and maybe give ourselves a hug because nobody else can at the moment. And then as we calm down, our thinking brain can come a little bit more in line. And then we can start responding to our situation. We can start thinking, what do we need to do to help ourselves? We need to maybe put some new structures in, some new routines that will just ground us. We need to maybe get some exercise eat well, take some time to be still, do our normal, try and reintroduce or carry on with our, our practice, spiritual practices that help to ground us and keep us still. The main thing is that we respond to our reacting monkey brain and then to kind of thank it for letting us know we're in danger and then bring on our more thinking brain to help us to navigate and negotiate these difficult times. So there are just a few thoughts that I've been having and um, I, hope, I hope they help. I hope they might stimulate some thinking and I wish you all well and hope you stay safe and maybe I'll speak to you next week.